Hello, welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Onahar. Joining us on today's episode, Mike Nelson, CEO of Webinar.net, uh, which has recently become part of Excite Digital. Welcome, Mike. Hey, Steve. Uh, thanks for having me on. So uh, now uh, there's some big news that you, you've had in terms of incorporating your uh, webinar.net operations into Excite Digital. But first of all, tell us a little bit about your background in the online events business, uh, what you've been doing with webinar.net over the past couple of years, and uh, how you've been trying to position yourself uh, in the market up until now. Sure, Steve. Well, yeah, it's been in this space for uh, a very long time. I, I started off early in my career um, uh, as a uh, VP of sales over at On24, starting in the early 2000s, and um, and broke off from there at some point. And then I actually um, you know, co-founded Six Connects, virtual event platform provider, and this was all pre-pandemic. Um, so really innovating and, and, and building those platforms out. We were just about to launch Webinar.net before the pandemic, um, and also obviously the timing you know, was... Uh, was fortuitous for us in that sense. And so really the goal, what we always wanted to do with webinar.net was sort of reimagine um, the webcasting space. And really the plan was always we wanted to stand it up entirely on AWS. Um, a lot of the platforms are, are still on sort of data centers. Uh, and we wanted the flexibility to use AWS, not just for hosting, but for all the other suite of tools that it provides. Um, and most recent example I can tell you is that, you know, regenerative AI uh, solution that they have um, we're, we're incorporating that today. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and so the other thing was we just really wanted to, uh, you know, reimagine um, if we were starting over uh, what a webinar solution, webcasting solution might look like, and really with a focus on on ease of use. A lot of the platforms today, um, uh, they're quite complicated to use, um, and we really wanted to have a robust feature set, um, really being able to set up a platform uh, uh, for a webinar within a couple minutes. And just in the past uh, week or so, you've announced plans to to fold Webinar.net into Excite Digital. Tell us a little bit about that transaction, uh, what you know about uh, the Excite Digital team and how this positions you on a moving forward basis. Yeah, yeah, I'm really excited and, and I think the time is, is great. I think, you know, with the, with the pandemic, um, not only, you know, did the, um, the business take off and you had a, a, an enterprise um, you know, class of professionals that really sort of were learning about what you could do online, um, but a lot of new platforms uh, came out into the marketplace. And so um, at this point, you're seeing a much more sophisticated um, buyer in the enterprise, and they're looking for a provider who can not just provide the one tool, but can provide a whole suite of tools, and most importantly, a service level on top of that. So joining Excite, we are going to be, you know, uh, a webcasting product within a family of online events solutions, and a global services organization. Um, so we go into any enterprise group, we can really sort of consult and meet their needs uh, with anything that they need. So let's talk about the state of the webcasting business today. I think a lot of people would describe uh, the industry overall as being a state of a little bit of a COVID hangover, if you will. Uh, 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 there's change afoot within the marketplace. So what, do, what role do you see for webcasting and outbound corporate communications? Yeah, for sure. Well, we were, you know, we were building a product, um, you know, pre-pandemic. So we've always been sort of bullish on the space. I think what, what COVID did was it just sort of forced everyone into it. Uh, things got a little bit crazy. And so I think now, um, you know, really, I would say, you know, it's, it's, there's a little bit of a dip while I think people are sort of now settling in and figuring out where they want to go. Um, but I think there's, there's no question that what we're seeing is while people are still looking to do face-to-face -face interaction, um, there's, you can't really put the genie back in the bottle uh, and there's still gonna be a huge demand. I think what it's gonna come down to is, um, you know, how do people create really interesting online events, right? As we know, you know, their Zoom and Teams are fantastic products, but they're, meet, they're, uh, they're online meeting tools and um, there's a little bit of fatigue there. So if you're really gonna be getting enterprise to do a, uh, a sort of a full virtual or in person, uh, you really have to level up the game and make it interesting. Uh, and, and that is what we're seeing. We're seeing people are building plans around this. Um, it's going to be a part of the mix. Um, and I think it's just going to be a steady climb from here on out. So since the pandemic, uh, I think a lot of people have been throwing webcasting and, and virtual events into kind of the same definitional bucket. Uh, uh, for the uninitiated, uh, uh, define uh, the difference between the two and what organizations should be thinking about when they're 
deciding whether to use a webcast or a virtual event uh, for some of their online marketing activities? I feel like I've been answering that question for decades. I don't think it ever goes away. Uh, I think everybody has their own definition. So I think what I, what I could tell you is when I'm talking to to uh, to an individual, uh, you know, I, I try to you know break it down in three ways. I think you've got your uh, your online meetings, right? You've got your your, your Zoom and Teams, and those are largely collaborative. Um, and then when it comes to a webcast or a webinar, it's more of a one to many. Um, I like to break it down into kind of a real world example, right? So you're in a boardroom having a meeting, it's casual, it's impromptu, you know, that's kind of an online meeting tool. When it comes to doing a presentation, you know, somebody standing at a podium in front of a room, a little more production value into it. Um, and then certainly the virtual event is really kind of the, the, the large multi-room experience, you know, a lot of interactivity going involved. And so, you know, maybe not going to be, um, uh, you know, a 30-minute presentation, but it can be multi-session uh, breakout rooms. It can involve webcasts and webinars all built in one. So uh, in describing your platform, you talk about issues uh, related to ease of use. Uh, tell me about how you make a platform easy to use and how does that help you differentiate yourself in the marketplace? Sure. Yeah, well, we, you know, we, we had the luxury of, you know, being in the space for a lot of years. And when we, when we decided to, uh, you know, had the opportunity to start from scratch, we knew what all the features and functionality were going to be, we weren't building it as we went. Um, so what we really wanted to do was create a solution that allowed the flexibility um, to really kind of do whatever you want if you're a power user. But if you're not, being able to come in and easily set up a webinar um, within uh, a few minutes. And the way we do that is people can go in within an hour and build out a fully customized event. What that allows us to do is it allows them to bring in that sort of branded experience, all the customization they want, um, and then just rinse and repeat. The other thing is um, allowing people to to sort of schedule multi uh, events out into the future that are pre-recorded and that they run live. And so that case, the event's already been produced and they push it out. So I can't let you get away from an intelligent video today interview without talking a little bit about AI. How, how do you think your platform today is using AI and uh, how's it going to impact your roadmap uh, over the next several years? For sure. So we, we put a lot of thought into that and what we, uh, a lot of what we're looking at right now, I think the most obvious one, I talked about it before was, you know, AWS regenerative AI, and that is really leveraging uh, their solution from voice to text. So we are going to be rolling out as kind of a, a, a solution where you can turn on voice to text immediately. The software is really good for that. We can do that. Um, one of the exciting things that we're seeing is what we're, what we're looking at is called sentiment reporting. And so what it's really going to do is it'll take together all the elements uh, that you get in a, in, in a webinar, polling, questions, surveys, and it will take that and it will sort of um, sort of tell the, the audience and the speaker how the presentation is being received, right? How they're looking at doing that. Um, and so, so those are just a couple of the things. Some other things, um, you know, in terms of allowing to the, the image creation, right? having a, a background um, where you don't have to have an individual there that maybe can't really put the background together, uh, you know, uh, perfectly, allowing a lot of the solutions and AI to sort of build images. Last but not least, on the video side, um, a lot of uh, voice dub over, uh, allowing you to do that immediately and create one presentation. So somebody on the fly can be listening to a CEO, do a presentation in English, and they can immediately translate it uh, to, to Spanish uh, on the fly. So there's just a few of the things that we're looking at. Certainly a lot of changes uh, through AI integration uh, into webcasting platforms, creating new opportunities. It'll be interesting to, to watch that over time. I'm Mike Nelson of uh, Webinar.net and now Excite Digital. Thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. And we thank you for watching today's episode. If you want access to more insight from thought leaders like Mike Nelson, just uh, go subscribe to the Intelligent Video Today channel on YouTube, and you'll get notifications of future interviews in the Intelligent Video Today series. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Onderhaar. Thanks for your time.